What's up everybody? I'm so exhausted right now, but I found a perfect video moment. I just couldn't pass it up, but I just got done detailing this minivan and <laughs> every minivan is the same. It's just a dark hole of everything that you can't find anymore. It just gets lost in the minivan. There's french fries, there's gum on the carpets. It's just the whole nine yards, like every single time. I've never found a clean minivan. But just check out this finished product. I so wish I could have shown you guys the before. There it is. Detailed, no dust, no dirt. Carpets are not perfected because, well, they needed to be replaced. So there's no way to perfect that. This was just an interior detail. This was not anything more than just interior. However, man, it was dirty, but man, now it's clean. So the subject of this video today is going to be what you should do with carpets that really, with, with floorboards in particular, that really just need to be replaced. Like you need to throw them out and get new ones, but you don't want to spend the money to do that and you want to pr improve it as much as you can. So this is for the professional detailers and the do-it-yourselfers. Probably specifically the moms out there with kids in the car. Um, once again, if you need to replace your carpets because they're that bad, here is something that you can do. So let me just give you guys the picture of the floorboard I'm working on right now. This is just one of the carpet floorboards in the minivan. And as you can see, this minivan has never been detailed and really they just wanted it to be improved. That carpet is so bad, but if you don't want to spend the money to replace the carpets, or you're a professional detailer, and normally the rule is light repeated applications when it comes to carpet shampoo, but when, when a carpet or a floorboard gets to this point, light repeated applications are going to number one, take hours, and number two, it's not going to accomplish the job, it just won't. There comes a point where if you carry like a pressure washer, you're gonna have to literally like pressure wash floorboards. Um, if you're not just doing high-end work and sometimes you get called to do just hard elbow grease work like minivans, there comes a point where you just have to use a hose and water. So to make it very simple, I'm gonna use four different things. I'm gonna use this Rug Doctor, which is a carpet extractor, but it's just like a retail product tool, so um, you can get it at really anywhere. I'm gonna use Purple Power uh, degreaser diluted five parts water, one part degreaser. And I'm going to use um, this scrub brush and I'm going to use a hose. So to start, all I'm gonna do is take my Purple Power and I'm going to just drench this floorboard in the Purple Power. I'm gonna soak it. Like I'm not trying to hold back at all. Now once I've done that, I'm gonna grab my hose and I'm gonna spray just a little bit of water all over the floorboard so that gives the Purple Power some kind of uh, some way to move and kind of disperse around the floorboard. And now, literally, <laughs> I'm just gonna take my scrub brush and I'm just gonna go at it with some elbow grease. <sighs> now, I'm so out of breath and I'm so tired from working. I've been working on the inside of this car alone for like five and a half hours. <laughs> Anyways, now that I've done that, I'm going to take my hose once again and I'm gonna just drench it in water. <laughs> Until it's almost like overflowing with water. So like this thing is dripping big time. Now, here's where my retail carpet extractor comes in. I'm gonna take my rug doctor and very simply turn it on and I'm just gonna pull all the water and purple power as, as much I can, as I can get out of this mat. Here's what came out of the first pass. So that's like, no, no bueno. So I think that's about all the uh, water and degreaser that I can pull out 
but check out this after. So obviously, there's still a bunch of staining and the little spots you're seeing are like pieces of gum that have just like hardened and become <laughs> like structurally important to the carpet. But here's the after. Now check out the before. So that was before and this is after. So obviously you can see a big difference, but there's still a bunch of staining. And it has to be understood that there will always be staining with a carpet like that. Like, it's not to bring it to perfection. This method is not to perfect anything. This method is only to do something in order to not have to replace the floorboards. And especially if you're a professional detailer, there is a mindset inside of a lot of people, especially in the detailing world, where they call and they want their car brought to like perfection. And they kind of assume that they're paying for somebody to bring it to like 100% full perfection. And that's just impossible in a case like this. And so I'm not looking to bring this floor mat to perfection. I'm just looking to bring it to a place where not having to replace it is now an, a viable option. And so a couple things to note if you're gonna use this method. Number one. If you're going to use this method, it's a good idea for it to be a sunny, warm day outside because you're so drenching the floor mat with so much liquid that it's difficult for that much of it to dry if it's cloudy or if it's cold. So just understand that you need to be in a place where like dr the drying process can actually happen like efficiently. Just because you don't want to leave that much moisture in a carpet like that for an extended period of time because things mold like very easily. Number two, using a shop vac to extract the water is a question that I've gotten before and that's just not a good idea when you're using this amount of liquid because a shop vac doesn't have the suction power that an extractor is going to have. So even if you, if, whether you use a professional industrial extractor or you just use a retail extractor, both are great for this in particular but just make sure it's an extractor. And if you're a professional detailer, it's just a good idea to invest in one, whether it be industrial grade or something simple like the Rug Doctor. I don't use an industrial carpet extractor all the time. Most of the time, the Rug Doctor is plenty for what I need it for. But make sure that you have something with a lot of suction power like an extractor because you're gonna wanna pull as much of that water out as you possibly can. So perfection is just not an option with something like that. It's never gonna be an option, and we gotta have reasonable expectations in order to actually do the job right, regardless of if you're a do-it-yourselfer or if you are a professional detailer. And as you can probably see, I am literally driving home in the dark because that car, I started <laughs> at two o'clock in the afternoon, and it is 8.30, so Let's just say I finished at 7.30 because I did a video, I packed up all my stuff. So two to 7.30, five and a half hours, five and a half to six hours. That's like a serious job and it was only the interior. So that ought to tell you how bad the interior really was. But at the end of the day, that's what's going to make you a successful detailer is not necessarily knowing everything, having the most expensive equipment, having the best tools, the best products, having it all figured out. What, what made my business successful was not me getting everything perfect, it was work ethic and being able to put in the time, put in the hours to be successful at it, do a great job. I mean, when I started, I literally started in a Mazda Miata, a 1997 Mazda Miata. I had a crate of product and a shop vac in my passenger seat, and that's it. I literally used Armor All to clean and do everything to the whole interior, Armor All and a toothbrush. So I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I was actually building a business and building clientele while I was doing that because my intentions were right. I wanted to do a great job. I wanted to be the best at what I did in my area, but I didn't know what I know now, but it didn't take the know-how for me to build a, a great successful business. It took work ethic, and I would spend 10 hours on certain people's cars, and that reflected something to people. And so not that I'm saying you need to start that way. That's kind of the point of why I make these videos so that you don't have to go through what I went through, but 
when you spend 10 hours on somebody's car, that says something to them. I mean, that says like who you are and the kind of work ethic that you do and they call you back because of that. They don't wanna lose the relationship that they've built with you because there's not a lot of people in the world that they know who do that kind of thing. And that's what made my business successful is just pure work ethic and people skills. Just talking to people, building relationships and having a great work ethic. So I'm saying that to encourage you guys who are wanting to get into the business who are or who are already a detailer, there's so much dishonesty in the detailing world that if you work honestly and you're a detailer, your business is bound to grow just probably based off your honesty and your work ethic. I mean, those two things alone. Now, once again, the way that I cleaned those floorboards, I do not clean them that way every time. It's pretty rare that I have to do that. The only time I ever will soak a floorboard in like, degreaser and soak it with a hose and pull it out with an extractor is if they're pretty much beyond what I call the point of no return and the only other option is replacing them because when you let them get to that point there's no other way to effectively clean it than if you have some type of water source and an extractor. It just, it gets to that point of light repeated applications just is not gonna cut it, it's not enough. The carpet will literally sit for so with so much dirt for such an amount of time that the fibers of the carpet that should stand up get matted down and pressed down and the only way to kind of pick them back up and brush them to where you can actually get in between the fibers again to clean it is to take water cleaner and a scrub brush and just go at it with some elbow grease and guys really fast my last note um, if you would like to buy any of the products or the tools that I talked about today whether it be the rug doctor the purple power um, yeah, I think that's really it. The Rug Doctor or the Purple Power. I will link those things up in the description box below this video. All you gotta do is hit the show more box and you'll see those links. So guys, once again, my name's Luke, and if you have not yet subscribed to my Wilson Auto Detailing YouTube channel, then consider subscribing because I come out with new videos every two to three days of tips and tricks for not only the professional detailers, but also for the do-it-yourselfers regarding products to use, tools to use, strategies to implement, business skills, communication skills, and so much more. All videos full of valuable content and valuable information in an effort to help you not only simplify your world but also make you more efficient and yield better results while you're detailing cleaning and maintaining your car so make sure you hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of this video and guys as always from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing I will catch you guys next time see this is why I love detailing and where I detail in Middle Tennessee because it is so freaking gorgeous.